Well, if you've ever thought about the cadential 6-4 chord progression, you may have been a little confused. I know I've been learning about a lot of music theory and sometimes when we're trying to explain things or really understand them, we have to just simplify things. Let's just make it easy to understand. What is a cadential 6-4 chord progression? And how do we write a cadential 6-4 chord progression? How do we play it? What does it sound like? Why do we need it? So from the Ultimate Music Theory Advanced Rudiments Workbook, we're going to take a little peek inside. I'm Glory St. Germain from Ultimate Music Theory. And today we're talking about how to write the cadential 6-4 chord progression. And what is it? Inside the Advanced Rudiments Workbook in the Ultimate Music Theory series, uh, we're actually flipping over to page 56. And here students are learning about triads. They're learning about close position and open position. And they're also learning about the figured bass. And we're gonna take a look at what is the figured bass and how does it, how does it play into the cadential 6-4 chord progression? So let's start, get started. So first of all, let's talk about chords. So we're going to talk about the primary chords of one, four, and five, and we're in the key of C major. So the one chord is C, E, G in the key of C major. Uh, the subdominant chord, the fourth degree is F, A, C, and the dominant chord is G, B, D. That's the five chord. Now, when we're talking about figured bass, figured bass indicates the intervals that are created above the lower note. So here if we have C major triad, C, E, G, and we're going to put it into second inversion. And now let's take a look at the intervals. So now we have a one, six, four chord because we have the root, which is now G, and from G to E is an interval of a sixth. And from C to G is an interval of a fourth. So that's called a one, six, four. It still is the C major chord, but it's in a different inversion. It's actually in second inversion here. So let's identify our chord progression as we see it. Now, just kind of looking at this measure and this measure, they look identical, but we're going to identify them a little differently. So the first one is C major chord, and we realize that's the tonic, and the root note is C, and so that indicates that it's the tonic in root position. The next one we see is F, which is the four chord, and F is the lowest note, so that indicates this is in root position, so that's the four. Now we see G, so if it was G, B, D, it would indicate the five chord, but the notes in fact are C, E, G, with the lowest note being C, or being G, sorry. And when you have the lower note as G, this is in an inversion. And the lower note G indicates, as we've discovered, that it would be in second inversion, indicated by a one, six, four. Now we see G again as the lowest note. However, this time we have G, B, D. So G, B, D indicates the five chord in root position because G is at the bottom. And finally, the last one, oh, surprise, it's exactly the same. So we have our 5-1 cadence at the end, and that would indicate that it's one. That seems pretty simple, right? I like to use the KISS method. Keep it super simple. Now, when we're talking about caden uh, cadential 6-4 chords, we often think about Baroque music, and I'm going to call it the Bach bling. Sheila mckibben Uren has written, um, she's the co-author on the Ultimate Music Theory program with me, and she's written amazing blogs, and in particular, one on the cadential 6-4 chord progression, and you can check it out at Ultimate Music Theory com, And what I want to share with you is that Sheila talked to me earlier and she said, you know, it's kind of like uh, the Baroque bling when you get to the cadential 6-4 chord progression. And here's what she meant by that. When we look at the one and the four, we've already identified that as the tonic chord and then the subdominant chord, one and then four. And now we're going to look at something a little different. Here we see our, our G and our C. E and G again, but this time it's indicated as a five, six, four. And we may be wondering, what? 
you just told me that was a one six four. Why are we calling this a five six four? That's confusing. Well, in fact, when we look at the next chord, we see that this is our G chord, which is the dominant, which is five. And the five three, the figured base, indicates that it's in root position, right? So that would be, uh, if we we're talking about G, this would be a fifth. And this would be an interval of a third above. So that would be called a 5-3. So now when we have our cadential uh, cadence, we actually see that the notes are moving down by step. C moving down to B, E moving down to D. But G remains in the same pitch. And this is called the cadential 6-4 chord progression. So it's kind of like a little bling in the Baroque style. <laughs> and we're really moving our 6-4 chord down to the 5-3. It sounds so pretty. You really need to play it. And this moves into the 1 chord. So when you see the 1-6-4, it will always move to the 5. Just as when you see the 5-6-4 chord, it's always going to move to the root position of the five chord. So this is how you discover how to write the cadential six, four chord progression. It makes it super easy when you kind of map it out and make it simple. I hope you've enjoyed this. Make sure that you uh, subscribe to our Ultimate Music Theory YouTube channel. Check us out and join us on our Ultimate Music Theory Facebook group. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Uh, I look forward to uh, make sure, oh, I forgot, that make sure that you sign up for our, subscribe to our Ultimate Music Theory YouTube channel because we release new videos every week and you don't want to miss them. Till next time, have a great day.